Hey team, it's Tim here from Racecraft. Welcome to today's Gold Members webinar. Today we're going to be talking all about making use of damper potentiometer data. Before we get into that, I'm going to do a little bit of a pre-show for you guys like we always do. Uh, to start off with, I'll talk about what's been going on around the shop for us. Uh, as always, we've been doing quite a lot of work on our SR-powered uh, GT86, which is an endurance racing car, which is getting a whole lot of updates for the upcoming uh, race series and endurance race series we do here in New Zealand. Last year that car was built uh, and it was still relatively immature in its development process and the guys have been chipping away, slowly going through and improving things on that car. Now today I went to the workshop before I came into the studio and had a bit of a look around to see what was new that I could show you guys. If you jump off across to my laptop screen here, uh, Jimmy at Fabricator is busy uh, building a new style of rocker cover for the car so you can see here this is uh, basically a factory SR20 uh, rocker cover with this section pretty clearly it's had a pretty hard time it's been taken to with a mill to um, to get rid of uh, part of the clearance where you'd usually have a baffle in the top of the rocker cover. Essentially what's going on there is we're mounting a new set of ignition coils there. So as well as a whole lot of reliability stuff, uh, that stuff with the cooling system and everything that's been going on with upgrades for that car, we're also fitting a new style of ignition coil. And what we've decided to do is mount them on top of the rocker cover. So in this particular situation, uh, when we've got a, this uh, particular engine has got a dry sump, so it gives, uh, gives us a little bit more flexibility with what we can do with the rocker cover as far as uh, making it breathe. So we have actually got the ability to cut down one side of the rocker cover and give ourselves a little bit more room to uh, mount those ignition coils in. I'll come across here, this is the uh, ignition coil sitting on the bench here so we can see what all four coils. This is a pretty common st uh, style of coil you'll see being used uh, in motor racing. Particularly on a lot of rotaries and stuff, you'll see these this sorts of coil uh, being retrofitted into them. It's a really high quality motorsport style coil. Completely generic and can be applied to everything. Essentially, we've been running a uh, style of aftermarket uh, coil on plug coil that we've been having quite a few problems with. Not only have we had a couple of reliability issues with them, they're actually really hard to use. It's really easy to damage them when you're putting on putting them on and off the engine. So for that reason, because we have been taking spark plugs out quite regularly, and inspecting things in the engine, uh, it's, it seems to be a better option for us to go to a more universal style motorsport coil where we can run our own little HT leads and just make it a lot more flexibility, give us a lot more flexibility on that. So Jimmy's been working away mounting this. You can see here, he's uh, in this case, this is the template that he's made uh, for the flat plate that's going to go on top of this. And then he's going to weld a whole section of bosses. So essentially, each one of the coils will be sit mounted along the top of the rocker cover here. He's got a nice, a nice little tricky technique there where essentially he, uh, when he's going to make a template like this, he makes use of like a masking tape and he can go around and cut around and get it sitting exactly where he wants it. And he can peel that piece of masking tape all in one go, transfer it to a piece of uh, paper or cardboard or even directly to the piece of material that he wants to cut out of it, which in this case is going to be an aluminium sheet, which is going to be welded on top of the rocker cover. And uh, that gives a really nice quick way of giving yourself a nice shape to work to. So I think by the end of today, I took this, uh, this photo just before I came to the studio. So uh, by the end of today, uh, he should have that rocker cover finished up and we can start working getting those coils mounted. Uh, while I was there, I took a picture of the little baffle plate he's made as well. So this baffle plate here uh, mounts essentially in this other section, this and this side of the rocker cover. You can see we've got uh, a little outlet here, which is a Dash 8 outlet. We've got uh, another one of those that's going to be uh, fitted to the rock cover. Initially we had one on each side, but now we've obviously modified that one side. We're going to fit uh, a second outlet to here, which is, runs to our dry sump tank in the back. But before the oil can get out, we run it through a little baffle, which is this bit here, just to make sure that you've got, a, obviously you've got a really chaotic environment in there. You've got oil splashing around everywhere. This just means uh, any oil that's being flung around by the cams hits this baffle plate. And so it has to take a bit more of a labyrinth path to get up to, uh, to get to the rocker cover so it can get to the oil. Oil tank. The idea here is that we want to keep the actual oil in the engine, but we want to allow uh, any blow by or any gas that's in there to bypass back to the tank without actually ending up, up pumping a whole lot of oil to the back of the tank in the back of the car. Yeah, so that's what's uh, probably one of the bigger upgrades that's been going on in that car. We've also just ordered a, uh, a brand new Hollinger transmission, a sequential transmission for that car. Again, just to give us a little bit more reliability in the transmission department. So there was quite a lot of work going through and uh, specifying the gear ratios we want to use for that. We, I used a little bit of simulation. Maybe I'll go through that in a future webinar talking about uh, how exactly we came to choosing those ratios. 
So that's it for what's been happening around uh, the workshop. We have got uh, a giveaway running at the moment, which is to give away a race tech seat and harness setup as well as a course package. So I'll just head across to that on my browser here. So I think you can find this on our Facebook page and certainly on our Instagram. That's where I'm looking at here on our Instagram. Essentially, uh, as you can see there, it's all listed there. They're giving away an RT4100 uh, HR, which means head restraint. So it's got the wings on the seat there. It's giving away one of those seats, uh, one of their sets of six point harnesses. And we'll also throw in some courses for you guys as well. You can see that as one of the nice things about the uh, harnesses they're using, are the, they've got these essentially thin top sections of the harness. That's the, um, the main part of the harness is three inch, but the top part is a two inch. And the idea there is it just makes it a little bit easier to interface with uh, a harness device or a front head, frontal head restraint system, which is what a lot of people would be using these days where you see this, you know, sort of hard collar. A lot of you guys I'm sure will be using them already, which connects to your helmet just to stop uh, your helmet coming too far forward in the crash. So the way these harnesses work is that, uh, with being thinner over the top is they just interface a little bit nicer with that head restraint system, particularly of the Hans style. So that's why they use those. I thought I'd just jump across to the race, uh, the race tech website uh, and just show you guys a little bit of details about the seat because there is one particular safety feature I wanted to talk about uh, on these. So race tech does make really a really, really high quality product. They're actually New Zealand made, but they're used in all sorts of uh, really high level cars. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Porsche, Aston Martin, Lots of other companies are all uh, build their factory, both GT3 and GTE cars uh, with race tech as factory equipment. It's certainly a very well respected brand in the motorsport industry. As you can see here, it's got this, uh, we've got the head restraint, the side head restraint system. The idea here isn't in a crash, it's supposed to stop your head, uh, protect your head a little bit from moving around too much laterally, which is obviously a really nice feature, but something that's really common uh, in a lot of race seats these days. But the point, the thing I actually really wanted to point it out was the fact that you can rear mount it. So this is a system that uh, Race Tech offer in quite a lot of their seats. So in addition to the uh, mounts that we've got here down here, which is what almost every uh, race seat uses ubiquitously, which is essentially four bolts to be able to attach it somewhere close to either your factory rails or whether you're using some, some sort of aftermarket seat rail there. It's also got the ability to connect it to the roll cage. So the idea here is that you, that you use this extra uh, brace at the back to connect to something like your harness bar or whatever part of the roll cage you've got sitting there. And the idea here is it gives you a lot more, uh, it gives your seat a lot more support in a crash. You'll be amazed how far uh, even a really, really high quality seat like this moves uh, when it comes to a crash. It's actually really scary to see how much everything moves when you've got a big crash with big impacts. So just being able to brace that seat from the back uh, gives you a huge amount more rigidity and in my opinion, a lot more safety for the driver. So I just thought I would jump across to a couple more of the images here. I just wanted to show, uh, this is the, uh, this is the style of mount that they supply with that seat as well. So the idea here is these points here are the points where it uh, mounts to the seat, which I showed before, and they've got these mounts, uh, which there's usually different options to slide these along, but you can see they're, to made, uh, they're made to fit a standard uh, size roll cage harness bar. So it really gives that uh, seat a lot more structural integrity. I think it's a really nice feature of uh, race tech seats. I'm sure there's uh, lots of other uh, seat manufacturers doing a similar thing, but I think it's um, just a really important safety feature that I wanted to mention that is going to come as part of that seat. So uh, one of the, I just wanted to go through uh, the one of the recent releases we did here at Racecraft, which is actually a free lesson taken from uh, one of our recent data analysis courses. So this video is all about making use of braking markers. So this is talking about uh, using essentially eventually passive markers on the track. So whether it's things like uh, a mark on a wall or a, maybe a line in a track or a curb on the track or something like that that you can use as a reference. So to start with, you're gonna to have to be looking at these things uh, really actively, but eventually uh, these are things that you'll be starting to take note of uh, in your peripheral vision and you won't have to uh, sit there and have to um, really think about what you're using. So this video goes into talking about why using braking markers is so important, uh, how to make most use of them, how to optimize uh, parts of your braking techniques. So if you guys haven't already gone through uh, either of our data analysis courses, I suggest you head over to our YouTube channel and check out that video. There's uh, probably some really good info in there for you guys. Uh, as always, our uh, Racecraft forum has been relatively active, so I just went through a bit of a scroll through this morning and uh, saw to see if there's anything interesting I could bring to you guys. So there was this question by one of our members, uh, Eduardo Pereira, who is uh, looking at building his own hill climb prototype project. Uh, the sorts of cars he's looking at building are really cool little things. Uh, 
he is based in Europe, but this is uh, the sort of prototype style uh, car he's talking about building. This is just an example of something he posted on the forum. So the idea here is that they're typically motorcycle powered, so things like GSX-R thousands and Hayabusa engines and stuff like this. This is the most common things uh, you'll see powering these things, whether they're 600 or 1000 cc in this kind of range. Uh, and they're little prototypes, so usually steel space frame with a uh, sort of a body draped over top of them. So and uh, the question that we had on the forum was uh, basically about a blank sheet paper design, how to go about what to prioritize uh, in, the, in the design from process from start to finish. So I thought um, this is a relatively recent post. I think it only came up a couple of days ago, but already uh, myself and a couple of our members jumped on with uh, a couple of uh, great points which uh, if anyone is interested in uh, building their own car from scratch, which is an enormous undertaking, but it can be really rewarding, uh, I definitely suggest you head across to the forum and check out that conversation for yourself because there were some uh, really interesting points brought up by some of our members already. So guys, uh, as far as upcoming courses, uh, the guys in the video team are getting pretty close to the end of producing our Race Driver Fundamentals course, which is slated for release soon. Uh, and myself, I'm working on a Suspension Fundamentals course, which is uh, something we're aiming to release at the end of this quarter, which is essentially running through uh, the absolute basics and fundamentals of suspension, how everything works, how to tune it. Uh, there'll be some good practical stuff in that course as well. So keep an eye out for that if you guys are interested in that as a topic. So guys, don't, don't forget, uh, we've got that race tech giveaway that I suggest you go and jump on. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to enter and it's a really good deal. Get, get yourself a free seat and a free harness and some of our courses if you don't own them all already. Guys, that's the end of the pre-show. Uh, I'll see you back here in a second and we will get right into the lesson itself. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.